All right. Hello. Welcome. Happy Mother's Day. Um, and happy Mother's Day if you are a loving and nurturing soul, as well as moms and dads um, who provide that care that is so loved and appreciated. Um, and also, happy Mother's Day to all of us story moms and dads. <laughs> um, so, um, it is kind of weird. I feel like I'm catching my mom's cold, so I did not go over to visit um, the family with the little ones because I figured they, they don't really need another cold introduced into their um, <laughs> into their biome. They have three little ones. They get sick often enough as it is. Um, so that's why I'm still here. Um, I'm hoping that I can get some good words written um, and just kind of power through and get get something accomplished for today. <laughs> um, so, but I did, um, mom pulled out her, um, the planner pad that I got in her for Mother's Day. Um, I got the um, gamer version and she got the spring flower version of this little week weekly planner um that i bought from bailey j um she has a youtube and twitch channel if you are interested in her in her stuff um so but she's over with the fam um so i'm hanging out here gonna try and um get some stuff done um so i figured it would be a good opportunity to try and flesh out um the the nurturing characters that are going to play a part in um my stories so i figured i'd do a little bit of um thematic character building um because um especially since with the the historical mystery the mom needs to play a bit of a part with some of the things that she's doing and the dad does too. So, um, I figured I'd just like ball that up into the like family dynamics and flesh that out a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully y'all are having a good day. Um, and that y'all have an idea <laughs> of what you want to work on today, whether or not we actually get to that part. Um, <laughs> we will, we'll get to the timers. Um, I just, I am very highly aware of how distractible um, I, in particular, am and um, can't 100% guarantee that I will stay on my stated thematic character building task for even a full sprint. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can do multiple sprints, but we'll see. Um, just being honest. So. Yes, yeah, so happy Mother's Day to all of you loving and nurturing souls. And Sonia was here first and said, hi, hello, welcome. Sinite is here, hello, welcome. And Kai is here, heya, how are ya? And Elizabeth is here, hello, hello. Hope everyone is doing good today. You are ready to write some fun words today. That's always good. Fun words are better than not fun words. That was, that was a terrible phrasing. I was trying to say then murderous words, but if you're writing a murder mystery, then murderous words would be good. So I don't know. Awkwardness. CB says, hello. Hello, CB. Um, even though this isn't my situation, happy mother's day to all the fathers out there who do both jobs as well. Yes. 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 Um, it was always interesting when I talked to friends when I was growing up because, um, we, in, in some ways we had kind of a dad was the stay at home dad, uh, the stay at home person. Um, <clears throat> he had retired from his forestry business, um, and stayed at home. And so, and mom was still working, um, with Delta 
so we had sort of like the reverse of a lot of my friends um so yeah so it's it's definitely um <laughs> both parents definitely took part in the uh in the nurturing and um so yeah um persephone says hey writer peeps and waves hello nina is here hello 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 cool gamer is here hello and charlie is here hey hey yes depends on what context you which words you just consider fun yes because um i can tell you that when reading um specifically things like the odyssey i reach a point where i'm like i can't wait until we get to the massacre and i'm so excited when it's happening um <laughs> I've read the Odyssey far too many times, um, and yet, I, so I'm always reluctant to start it because it is kind of a, a beast to get through. But at the same time, like once I start getting into it, um, then I'm like, I can't wait till we get to the slaughtering part. I'm a terrible, terrible person. <laughs> um, but yes, this is it. Definitely changes your context of what is fun uh depending on what the the story is trying to do um charlie says i spent six and a half hours yesterday in branding marketing and monetization seminar oh that would be fascinating and your brain is still mush but you see the whole picture i bet um but yeah that's that's a lot a lot to take in and of course as you're going through what's like the current most applicable things, which I'm assuming is one of the reasons for the sem seminar, it's no use in having outdated information. Um, but yeah, that's the um, once you have once you've seen all the all of the things that are more applicable for current times and more applicable for future, like where we think technology is headed um, and trends in the market and everything, then like, I always feel like I have to redo everything. Like, I'm just like, I need to, I'm so terrible. It's all awful. I need to redo everything. Um, and you need to rebuild, create everything that you have figured out. You have a long, yes, exactly. This whole mindset, like you learn something new and you can, you can pinpoint what it is that either has not been as effective or is the wrong thing to do or um is just an obsolete thing anymore um and then you you want to update everything um <laughs> so yes i i've I, I understand this feeling and um that's awesome though that you have the long list of everything that you can already pinpoint which is great um, C CB says Liam Neeson has been doing both jobs on his own for 13 years since his wife passed. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Kai was the same. Your dad took early retirement and your mom worked. Yep. Yep. It's, it's a different, it's a different dynamic. Um, and, it, but it was fun. It was fun. So, um, Elizabeth says, oh, wow, Charlie seems like a lot. Yes. I bet Charlie's to-do list is very, very long. Um, and some of those things definitely, um, definitely take some, some finagling on the technology, um, back end. So, yeah. Um, CB says you had a babysitter from when you were four until you were 14. Your mom worked full time and your father. Yeah. Yep. That's why I said nurturing souls is because sometimes people are raised by mom sometimes raised by dad sometimes raised by aunties or grandmas or grandpas um so yes nurturing souls we are blessed when we find them um charlie says to elizabeth yes you have a clear brand identity now that will bring your writing websites podcasts and youtube channels together as a single machine to promote and create your work <laughs> That's so good, though. You feel like you're kind of flailing all around with promotion and stuff. Yeah, because I don't know enough about it. So um, hopefully Charlie will uh, give us some insights as well. <laughs> um, but yes. 
um, Ms. Ocampo writes, Monique is here. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. CB says, Father's Day was always difficult. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Rachel says, that's great. Charlie, yours is kind of broken up and you need to put things together. Me too. In, in the meantime, I'm also still debating pseudonym for different genres, whether or not I should do that. If I, and if I do, which, which pseudonym do I go with? <laughs> um, so I feel like I spent, because I haven't made those decisions, I'm not quite ready to like ramp up the branding, I think. That's my excuse for procrastinating anyway. Monique says, you're in the middle of editing chapter seven of My Ex is a Vampire while listening to Critical Role's lo-fi videos. Nice. Kai says, marketing and branding is definitely your weak point and you really want to learn more about it. Yeah, well, I think it's, I think it is ultimately a very necessary thing for authors to learn because even if you're, traditionally published or if you are self-published or with the small indie house, whatever it is, um, we need to know how to run our social media. Um, we need to know how to um, market ourselves and promote ourselves when we eventually do things like magazine interviews or blurbs in um, the back of our books or blurbs in um, anthologies and um, when we get those eventual radio interviews and TV interviews and all of those things. Um, it's going to be a necessary part of learning to promote ourselves, our work um, with a consistent, a consistent manner and that we have to keep doing it. Um, especially when we have something that's coming out, um, or to keep reminding people that we, we still exist and so do our books. Um, but also because social media is so prevalent now, um, but we really don't want to, and here's the thing, cause I've seen, I've seen several stories, nightmare stories about, um, a, and this creative doesn't have to be necessarily an author, but a creative that works for a larger company. Um, and they allow the company to run the social media. I think that's a bad idea because it gives them huge access to your name, your pseudonym, your property. And by a lot of the, the contracts and things from what I understand, um, put the things that they post under their purview from what I understand this then this may not be every contract so this is one of the reasons why you should always read your contracts um, because if they own your social media they own the name that you post those things under which means then that your your branding belongs to somebody else so if you ever decide you want to leave and go to a different company or publisher or different social media, how, you know, guru to do your stuff. Um, then that belongs to them still. If you have one of those contracts. So I think in order to protect your own creative work, you have to know how to do it yourself or at least be able to have a supervisory eye over it so that you know it's being done correctly and that you know it's being done under the name that you want it to do. It, that's my understanding at the moment. I'm sure I, I'm sure some of that might be wrong. I don't know. Um, but that is my understanding as of current what I know. <laughs> and I don't know a whole lot, but I'm hoping to learn more as Kai said. Um, but that is definitely, I think it's a necessary part for us to, to learn about. Um, I don't think we can always, it'd be, I mean, even if we go traditionally published, you still have, like, they still will want you to do things um, to promote your book. Like, you're still going to have to go do interviews. You're still going to have to, uh, <laughs> like, do all the promotional stuff. Like, if you look at um, LaSalle Sambury, she's still doing promotional stuff. 
Um, she has very great branding. Um, I'm sure that they help her with that. Um, but at the same thing, like you have to be cognizant of the fact of like who owns what and be very careful <laughs> about things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, CB says, I may be word counting today or not. Depends on whether you get to the end of page 15 longhand. Gotcha. Rachel says, yeah, pseudonym has always been a decision that you're close to um, because people see your name and think of the uh, actress Rachel McAdams. Uh, but you do have a decent following. Yeah, that is the one thing um, is that they know you under one name. And so you have to sort of if you decide to start with a pseudonym, then you have to kind of start building name recognition all over again. Yeah. Um, you hate that it's so hard for you to focus sometimes. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> um, that's one of the reasons why today I have had only this much of my coffee. Because um, the brain is is not having the 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 strength to keep up with the jitters today. So, yeah, so you keep going back and forth on pseudonyms as well. Yeah, um, same, <laughs> same. Um, Elizabeth says, or no, Charlie says to Elizabeth, um, for you, the key was figuring out that your brand personality is celebration and that made everything click. You'll be documenting the journey as you take it. Um, so for your brand personality of celebration, the simplest Actionable advice you can share is never promote your work, but celebrate the stages. Ah, okay. The journey and the victories and the sizzle of the stake. Gotcha. Then that makes sense because if you're celebrating stage or milestones, then um, people feel like they're on the journey with you, which is nice. Um, Charlie, to Charlie, uh, I see as opposed to something that you push on people, that is at least what I am feeling sometimes, like you're pushing something instead of um, promoting or so. Yeah. Yeah. I love the way Charlie explains things sometimes. <laughs> They're great. Um, CB says WWE owns the names of all their superstars. So when someone gets fired or leaves, they have to change their names so they don't get sued. Yes. Um, so it's always wise to have someone with experience, yeah, uh, in the legal field who knows how to read contracts and read over the contract before you sign it, if you can, and if you have to factor that into the bud in when budgeting for publication. Yes. Yeah. Um, cause I know several, um, let's see, Jane Ann Krentz had to work to purchase back her name from her original publishing company. So she used another name for a while. Um, and then once she finally got her name back, um, she could publish with it again. Um, and that's also a, a reason why a lot of people do use pseudonyms is because then it doesn't get mixed up with like your personal owning of things. Um, Cause that could also be a problem. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, the fact that like, you might not own your name if you decide to, I think that was, um, one of the designers on, uh, say yes to the dress. Um, yeah, her name was essentially like, um, a legal battle going on about over her name and whether she could use her social media or not and things like that. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Um, Charlie says to Elizabeth, exactly. No one wants to be sold to, but we all love party. Make it a celebration. People want to be part of participate in and share along with you. Yes. Love the way to think about that. Yes, I do too. Rachel says, Oh Lord, I'm going to be up all night. You went to the Asian market and picked up some canned iced coffee. Oh no. <laughs> But also, maybe you'll get some stuff done. Um, Nina says, I'm still figuring out all the pen name pseudonym things because your real last name is not good to use in English. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And that's another factor too. Um, yeah. Haley Page. Yes. I couldn't remember if it was Haley Page or um, Nina. 
but yes, Haley Page. Scary how you can, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, definitely be a little bit more careful with that. So, you remember reading about it, yes. Mr. Burkles, hello. Hello. CB says, the author who must not be named, real name is Joanne Rowling. She does not have a middle name. And Bloomsbury wanted her to include a middle initial. Yes, because a lot of the um, fantasy names um, have higher weight if they are gender neutral or masculine. Um, and also because of the um, popularity of um, J.R.R. Tolkien and George R.R. Martin. Um, and several of the others, um, Ursula K. Le Guin, um, because it became a, a thing in fantasy specifically. Um, yeah. Um, uh, which JK comes from the K is her maternal grandmother. Yeah. You remember that the writer of the Vampire Diaries didn't have the rights to her own book. And when the series became popular, they used other writers because they didn't like her original name. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, you have to be very careful about how you sign contracts and um, sell rights to things. You have to, yes, if 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 possible, definitely have a, um, <laughs> definitely have a legal consultant. Um, okay. All right, y'all. Um, we've been chatting for a little bit. I do need to get some work done. Um, I'm going to start off by setting up the planner for next week. So um, I'm going to be playing with stickers and getting that set up for the first sprint. Hopefully I won't take the whole time, but we all know how that goes. Um, I'm going to be using one of Laura's 25 minute timers. Her spring bouquet one. Um, nope, not that one. This one. Here we go. All right. Um, okay. Uh, it's, oh, I, I didn't do the card today either. That's the other thing. Okay. Let me, there we go. Okay. So the card for today is the bat. We have the bat spirit. He's just hanging out. Um, it says a rebirth is re a rebirth is assured. So, after something has run its course and died or been released, finished, or surrendered, completed, or ended, there is a promise of a new beginning. Rebirth is assured just as night gives way to dawn and the bat emerges from the darkness of a womb-like cave. The bat has come to remind you that this rebirth is a miraculous one. You know, this sounds very, very appropriate for Charlie and rebranding and branding. Um... <laughs> So, um, I, I think this card might be fit for Charlie, um, hopefully for the rest of us too, but I think specifically for Charlie. <laughs> um, okay, so the bat has come to remind you that this rebirth is a miraculous one for the very best elements of what you had to give up in the death of the old are all still present in this new amazing life forming now. This is the miracle and magic of rebirth in every aspect of your life, including the rebirth of faith in your ability to establish new and healthy relationships. The bat spirit reminds you that at present you are in unknown territory and you may, you may feel as if you are lost. However, you are called to trust that your intuition will be a reliable guide as you give birth to something new and unfamiliar. It's also very appropriate for our Mother's Day. Um, the bat spirit has listened in the darkness of night and has heard all your hopes and dreams, your fears and worries, and assures you that this new version of your dream, this move from darkness into light, from lost to found and death to rebirth, comes to fruition with love at its core. The bat asks you to trust that what you that what seems to have died is actually shape-shifting into something even more meaningful and wondrous than before. If you feel you are in the dark, know that come morning, all will be revealed and things will be in a new form that is right for you. So, um, very appropriate for our topics of conversation today. Um, <laughs> Charlie, let's all do a reboot. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, 
Yes, two middle names, you're good for the pseudonyms. Ms. Ocampo says, don't ask me about my name. Yep, um, it's fine, it's fine. The author of Babysitter's Club, and M. Martin, didn't write most of the books. She was ghostwritten. Yeah, though, I mean, the whole Nancy Drew series and the Hardy Boys series, um, and I think the Boxcar Children as well, um, were all ghostwritten. So, that's, yes. <laughs> excuse, excuse me while I scream an urban fantasy fan girl. <laughs> yes. Uh, I bet he is cute. He is very cute. Um, I like him. Yes, it was very appropriate for you. <laughs> uh, Persephone th says, bats have come up for a, a, a lot for me lately. Well, maybe that's your message then, is that you need to be paying attention to um, the rebirth of things. The recent drawings have been spot on. I'm telling you, I love this Oracle deck car, this the set. It's from Colette Baron Reed. Uh, I'm not sponsored. I'm heck, I would love to be, but um, I don't. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I've not had a sponsorship. I don't know how that works. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I, they have been very good. So Kai says the thought of losing the rights to your books is terrifying. Yes. Amen to that. Um, your characters are mine and it's so vivid and it's heartbreaking to think of somebody else writing them. You're really protected. And that's what you need to make sure is that none of the, um, contracts that you sign um allow for any of that so yes <laughs> all the reboots everything megan says hello we lost track of time but you're here welcome you just made it in time um nina says the bat is so spot on your life has changed so much but you are still working through it yeah but it is changing into something better which is great Sorry, not sorry, but seriously, you're working on a novel with vampires. Bats just feel so perfect. As they should. As they should. Um, Persephone says, uh, um, a little while ago, Pluto went retrograde in Capricorn. The last time for a long time as a Capricorn, this feels both mildly, mildly exciting and terrifying. Rebirth is a huge aspect of that. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I've got some dates written down um, based on my natal chart, and it's uh, it's gonna be uh, there's gonna be some interesting portions of the year. <laughs> so, um, Kate says hello, hello. You're on your final read through of chapter forty seven today. Ooh, nice, excellent. Persephone. Okay, a week ago. Yes, yes, yes. Um, VP, hello. You're gonna be reading today. Excellent reading sprints. Love that. Um, you're Capricorn as well. Pisces, all the way. Um, I didn't know Pluto was in retrograde. Um, <laughs> you have, in fact, you were, well, Mercury retrograde comes around a lot more often than we think. So, yes. All right. So let's remember to do this. So don't forget to save if you have already been working this morning, afternoon, whatever time frame it is for you. So to save, to make sure you have something to hydrate with. I have both water and coffee. I think I'm gonna be sticking with the water for now. Go ahead and take a sip, cheers. Three, straighten your spine, roll your shoulders back for that posture check. And four, make sure that if you need a break, um, make sure that if you, if you need it, take it. Refill that hydration, get a snack, whatever it is you need. All right, here we go. 25 minutes in five, four, three, two, one, go.
Did you know that? We have an ad. Mute it and play it. That way we can get done with it. Um, all right. There we go. I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Oh, no. <laughs> you would think that I would know how to do this. Um, yes. Did you know? Um, apparently, I did not. So, and I will continue to not. I just don't care. <laughs> um, anyway, so I was like three quarters of the way done with um, stickers um, on the week that I thought I was supposed to be doing. And I realized, I was like, it's not the 20th next week. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I realized I was doing the wrong week. So I essentially have done um i have stickered two weeks um so that i can so this is next week and then the following week is a little bit more bare at the moment um so i think i've got my general checklists of things that i want um to do on the daily and then some specific things for thursday um i've got those for this week. So I think I am good to, to close this and switch over to um, digital, I think. Um, yeah. So I figured I went, I went with mostly flowers for May, you know, uh, May, May, April showers bring May flowers. Um, the, this, agenda is not numbered because they are dated um at the top um so they've got um the actual dates so um you would think i would just pay attention to the dates but no i did not <laughs> um so yeah that's uh <laughs> that's how that went um yeah yep so i at least have a start for it's it's ready to use next week that is that is what i need um i do have in my bullet journal um those pages are in this particular version are um numbered at the bottom so i i do keep an index that i occasionally update Occasionally, not very often, but occasionally I'll just like batch update um, whatever is in whatever I've done for like the last two months. <laughs> I'll update the index, uh, which it's really weird because I'm used to indexes being at the back of the book and the table of contents being at the front. But with bullet journals, they call it the index, but it's at the front. I don't know. It's weird. I'm nitpicking, but it bothers me. <laughs> I ought to just like cover it up where it says index and just write TOC. <laughs> um, if it bothers me that much, it doesn't. It just, it's like a, a thing that I observe every once in a while. Okay. Um, Y'all chatted. Um, we're trying to figure out uh, how long a character might be injured for with a uh, sprained ankle. Um Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> Persephone says, I might have also num uh, stickered and decorated the wrong week once upon a time. Once or twice. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> yes. Um, Monique is on your second cup of coffee. You wanted to try this new batch of K-Cups you bought from Home Goods. Nice. Hopefully it was tasty. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, sprained ankles, uh, the severity definitely uh, makes a difference. But also, anytime you injure your ankles, it makes it more prone to rolling and re-injuring within the next six months. Yeah, so 
healed well enough to walk without pain much sooner. Um, but certain positions are mildly painful. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes. It depends on severity and the age of the person spreading their leg and or other health factors. Yes. So we have a 16, 17 year old basically twisted her ankle while running along a swimming pool. Um, your only frame of reference was how you tripped while playing kickball one time, pulled a hamstring, and ended up limp limping for a week. Um, should you re use crutches? That depends on the severity. Yeah, the severe. I'm probably probably pronouncing that with a <laughs> incorrect intonation, but whatever. Um, maybe the plot will help determine the severity of her injury. Would it be better if she were in limited by the injury or if it would help if she recovered quickly? Yeah. Because, I mean, you could definitely, like, depending on how the genre you're in, which I don't know if this is your vampire story or not. Um, but, yeah, like, romance tropes would have this be, like, one of the driving plot forces that would stick the two characters together. Whereas um, if you're like in a zombie apocalypse, um, that can make a real difference as to whether or not somebody dies. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, Megan says, so three to five weeks will probably be enough time. I did not use crutches when you sprained your ankle, just wrapped it, but some could use crutches. Like if she went to the doctor about the ankle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, Persephone says thinking if she recovered quickly would not be a big plot point, but if it was severe, if it were to severely limit or limit her actions or add suspense in some way, because she can't move quickly, it might be better to be severe. Yeah. Not a major plot point. Okay. So maybe not be too bad. Um, but something you have to be consistent. With. Yes. Cause you can't have her like jumping up and down and like go and play basketball, uh, with a sprained ankle. <laughs> Um, without her going, ow, this hurts. <laughs> so yeah, for minimal recovery time. Yeah. A few weeks should be enough. Yes. Um, yep. Kate says halfway through the chapter. Yay. Cyanide had dinner. Excellent. Excellent. Percentage is laughing. I, th I think this was at the, uh, ad. Did you know? <laughs> Um, CB says, okay, I made it to the foot of the page 15, which was about 480 words. So you're going to make some mozzarella sticks because your brain needs sustenance. Yes. Love that. And I'm jealous of your mozzarella sticks. Nina started making food. Excellent. Elizabeth said 193 words of copying and revising drafts, words from draft one to draft two. Nice. 192 revised words. That's good. 496 words. Kai's blowing it out of the water. Nice. Uh, Megan took a shower, contemplated writing something, but you have lots of reasons not to write what you want to write. Yes, that is, that is the thing. But you are here on the Dawdling Writer channel, so I will not judge you. <laughs> um, because you see what I did in my first sprint instead of... Um, <laughs> instead of actually writing so no no judgment judge free zone <laughs> um let's see be right back mozzarella sticks need to go in the air fryer uh charlie says i got a few things scheduled and some emails sent out then chrome locked up again oh no and you had to restart that stinks um my computer told me it needed to restart outside of the normal hours and so I set it for 8 30 last night and it did not restart itself so I don't know when my computer is going to randomly restart now um I guess we're gonna find out hopefully it's not during the stream knock on wood um, CB says I'm still dealing with a sprained ankle that flares up five years after you spray yeah yeah, it can be a recurring injury. Yes, absolutely. Heather's on the cheerleading squad. Uh, okay, so that's something tells you you won't be doing cartwheels during a homecoming. Um, you would actually be surprised. Um, so one of my best friends was a cheerleader. She also did gymnastics. And they did stunts on sprained uh, ankles and wrists all the time. 
Um, so yeah, they would just wrap it and, and go put a brace on it and go. Um, they had, uh, my friend constantly had, uh, pulled or sprained something and had, um, blisters all over her hands. Um, yeah, no, they, cheerleading squads definitely would perform while injured, not severely, but again, if you're not having her do a severe, um, having her have a severe injury, she would, um, they would likely do the stunts anyway. Um, just cause that's, that's how a lot of competitive sports and, or, um, things like that happen. So yeah, we would, <laughs> um, my friend would come in and be like, Oh, what's the injury in the work this time when she had something new wrapped? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, nice little segue into a little wor word of warning about the ride at wizarding world. You almost broke your ankle coming off of the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, right? Oh, oh, the moving walkway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That is scary. Uh, cartwheels can be modified so she can land on one foot. Yes, or, well, yes. I was going to do say aerials, but that has nothing to do with, um, that would be the wrists, not the, not the foot. <laughs> um Ask Mackenzie Zeigler about it. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. So let's shift gears and go into another sprint. Um, that way we can get a little bit more done. Um, I should be done with my journal. So I can kind of set that off to the side. That way I'm not tempted to uh, waste more time with it. <laughs> um procrastinate uh procrastinate decorate as it were um okay but don't forget whoa I'm, oh i'm doing the thing again collapsing the comments in the menu over there okay i, should, I need to hit the share button that's what i need to do <laughs> okay so 25 minutes this is the self promo sprint. So if you have something you would like to promote, make sure now's the time to do it. Your, um, let's see, what's my spiel? Your YouTube channel, your Twitch channel, your Etsy store, your Amazon page, your website, your blog, your social medias, anything that you would like to promote that is writing adjacent, now's the time to do so. Um, so yeah, don't forget to promote yourself. Also, don't forget to save your document if you have been working on a document today. Two, make sure you have something to hydrate with and cheers. Three, straighten your spine, roll your shoulders back for that posture check. Four, make sure that if you need a break, take a break. Those are your reminders. Here we go, 25 minutes in five, four, three, two, one, go.
All righty. That was sprint number two. <laughs> um, I got 412 words. <coughs> um, I don't know that they're all great, but at least they're there. So I will accept them. For now, I might have to cut their little heads off later, but for now, I will accept them. Um, don't forget that was sprint number two, so that was the self-promo sprint. If you have something to promote, the name of your blog, the name of your social media, your website, etc., etc., now's the time to promote that. Um, okay, so I think where I had left y'all on Friday, I was starting a new scene, trying to get to the <clears throat> garden party stuff where there would be two scandals and a murder. Um, so I have been working on establishing those. Um, one scandal is done. Um, the murder has happened, but nobody has discovered it yet. Um, so that's, I'm leading the characters to that. Um, and I still have to have the, the second scandal happen. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, again, this is my historical murder mystery. Um, it's going, it's going decently. I mean, it's, it's going much slower pace than I would prefer, but I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the process of it. Um, I probably should have written the ending first because I don't know who the ultimate antagonist is. Um, but I'm kind of, I decided to, uh, I think I also did this on Friday. I decided to do a scene that was from the antagonist's point of view, but no, ha not having any revealing um, names or pronouns just yet. So that was a little bit harder to write simply because I was very cognizant of the fact that I did not want to have um, pronouns in there, just in that scene just yet. So, yeah. Um, I might have missed a pronoun or two. I'm going to have to make sure of that when I edit it, if I decide to keep it in. But yes. It's a lot harder to write without pronouns than um, than you would initially think. But yeah. So, anyway. Um, CB says there are 38 one-shots on Archive of Our Own under the name Pepperoni Fan 1982. At the end of this month, you're going to be reviewing them and deciding which ones to keep. Gotcha. Megan says if you're not subscribed already, please hit, sub hit the subscribe button. And yes, Megan is much easier found through the link that she provides than uh, through just like search engine. Um, so make sure you click the link. Um, Megan says, I'm not sharing your Fiverr link today because you got your first sale. Yay. And you want to spend as much time as you can on polishing your work. Fair enough. And congrats on the sale. Monique, Monique says, I also plan to do a couple of blog posts. Excellent. It's a good idea not to abandon your blog like I have done. Um, says, I think I need to rethink the anniversary date of when Jane's father died. Well, hopefully that can be done. And apparently it was. Elizabeth says, I have live streams every Thursday at 6 p.m. GMT plus 2, which is noon Eastern, and you would love for us to join. And there is the channel link. BA is here. Hello. Hey, hey, y'all. How are you? And Elizabeth also has a bookstagram where you post book reviews and lovely pictures. And that's at A Little About Books. Cyanide got 56 words that time. Excellent. Good job. Also, I saw that the new Doctor Who choice was posted. I might be a little bit behind on this. Um, how are you feeling about the, the choice? Is it a good choice? I've not seen that much of 
the new um, the new upcoming doctors um, work. So I, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. Uh, CB says no words written. However, I did count six pages of terrible handwriting. <laughs> yes. Uh, no words, just food. That's okay. You got to fuel your brain. 290 words revised. Excellent. Excellent. Putting a sour cream pound cake. Mm, I love pound cake. In the oven for mom. Yes. Um, so is it like plain sour cream or is it sour cream um, chocolate? Because sour cream is one of the secret ingredients to keep your chocolate cake moist. Um, mom has a really great, um, pound cake, like base recipe. And then, um, we have, um, an orange pound cake version of that. Um, and then we also have blueberry pound cake. And then my favorite, which is the butter almond pound cake. Delicious. Um, so all the pound cakes over here. Yes, please. Um, Rachel says, I am revising the end of your novel and really enjoying it. You have figured out who to focus on and it has made things so much more clear. Yes. Um, I would also assume that this would happen if you write using um, multiple POVs. Uh, it would definitely matter who you are seeing through. You finished editing chapter seven. Hooray! And also ordered Chinese food to her late lunch. Excellent. Um, Kate says, slow sprint for me. My parents turned on Dune. Yes, that would make it slower. Very distracting. Yes. Okay, but here's the question. Which Dune is it? Um, is it the new one? Is it the old one with the um, <clears throat> magnificent, magnificent hats? <laughs> um, Megan says, just finished taking the dogs outside for a short little walk. They are happy now and I got some exercise. Excellent, yes. Megan's boyfriend is very excited about the new Doctor Who. Oh, good. Uh, Monique is also hyped up over Doctor 14. Excellent. Yes. Um, Sinai says, I don't know the actor who was chosen at all, so you can't wait to discover him in the role. Yes. I'm, I'm cautiously excited um, <laughs> because it seems like every time, like, the Doctor changes actors, I'm like but he's not my doctor anymore. <laughs> and then I fall in love with the new doctor. And I'm like, my doctor. And then again, they switch actors. And I'm like, but he's not my doctor. <laughs> so I, I go through that heartbreak every time. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, this one's cool too. So, yes. Um, Elizabeth says, that's awesome to Rachel about the end of the book. Yes. Um, CB says, I would have loved for Haley Atwell to get the Doctor Who role, but that didn't happen, especially after Multiverse of Madness spoilers go here and I'm not writing them in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no spoilers. Um, I think the Doctor Who new Doctor will do a good job. You're not a massive fan of the actor or the show. Um question how hyped up would a teenage girl be for her birthday depends on if she's expecting something um good for a present um because you had mentioned her age so i don't know if that's the age at which um parents might or might not be giving her a vehicle um let's see um What else? Uh, if there's a party, who would be invited? And if they would be um, left unsupervised or not? So shenanigans. Persephone says, just good old plain sour cream pound cake. Mm, yes, the basics. Uh, Got to have strawberries and cream with it. Yes, you can do it up. Lemon, lime, orange, cinnamon, anything you like. Yes, yes. Um, would you mention her? Uh, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. But again, that's if she has something that she's looking forward to. Um, once again, the stream makes you want cake so bad. <laughs> yes, I'm planning um, to do cupcakes for mom's birthday, which is Thursday. Um, uh, Mother's Day and birthday 
for her are like always, always right there. Sometimes uh, same day, a lot of, a lot of years the same day. <laughs> um, so yeah, planning to do cupcakes. Haven't decided the flavor yet. Um, Gabby is turning 14. Oh, okay. So this will be different character. Okay. Excited about getting vampire hunting abilities. Yeah, I, I absolutely she would be excited. Um, <laughs> is it James Cameron's Dune reimagining that he called Avatar? <laughs> Good question. That I hadn't thought of it that way, but yes. Um, there's always that cycle with Doctor. Yes, the but not my not my doctor anymore. Yes. <laughs> um, CB says I did Monique, but not that sort of kid who was popular or had a lot of going on. Yeah. Matt Smith will always be your first and favorite doctor. Uh, Christopher Eccleston was my first. Um, I may have seen a rerun or two of the older doctors. Um, but Christopher Eccleston was my first. Um, and I, I had to get past the living plastic episodes. Oh, and the, um, the one where they're running around back and forth in the, um, oh gosh, yes. <laughs> so, um, yes, I had to get past, I think the, I think it was the third episode of the Eccleston, um, that caught me. Um, so yeah, so Eccleston, but they're all, they're all so good. <sighs> Tenet was also amazing. Uh, and Matt Smith was too. And, um, I, I, hmm, such a good show. <laughs> um, okay. So yes. Yeah, so this, if you are not aware this actor name, um, I'm going to go with Megan's, uh, suggested pronunciation of shooty. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's the new, that's going to be the new doctor was great in sex education. So you're intrigued by his role. Um, I mean, he's apparently won Baftas before and that's really good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm cautiously excited <laughs> again, because I know I'm going to go through that whole like cycle of like, but not my doctor. So <laughs> I'll just be my ridiculous self over here and it'll, it'll all be fine. Um, Elizabeth said, I would think so, but it depends on if she's excited about the prospect or doesn't want to make video. Yeah. Um, not a massive fan of Dr. Who mainly because you're so far behind. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I buy like the seasons of things. And so I'm like, just give me everything. <laughs> give me the whole collection. Um, so I can binge watch it when I want. Um, Kai says to Charlie, that reminds me, I finally read Dune. It made you hate the film so much, but you fell deeply in love with the book. Yes. I mean, with a, a book like that, it's hard to do all justice to all the, the smaller things. Um, Gabby would be very excited about the idea of finally getting powers. Yes. David Tennant just has a special place, <laughs> but so does Chris Rockson, so does Matt Smith. <laughs> so, so, yes. Um, Dune Messiah tore your heart out, though. You, mm, mm -hmm. Guessing she'd want to have a very fun. Yes, I would think so. You'd love that book series, the ones that Frank wrote. Yes. You never read The Sons of Dishes. There's. It happens every time a descendant tries to take over the world. Sometimes they have some fun ideas, but the execution is just not the same. Um, so there, there's a couple of books that I really love that Anne McCaffrey did with her, with her son before she passed away, that the ideas are really good. And because she was still there to oversee everything, the execution of it was really, really good. But then when it was just by him, him by himself, it was just like, not as good. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, mm, cupcakes, indeed. More cake. Yes, <laughs> all the cakes. Uh, Children of Dune is your favorite of the five. Leto 2 is also good. You've been joking that Dune is basically Game of Thrones in space. Um, well, since Dune came first. <laughs> um, but yes. 
your favorite doctor was Ten. Tenet, yes, you started with the New Who Ninth Doctor, but all out of all of them, Matt Tenet was your absolute favorite. I I I like I can't pick a favorite anymore because they're so good at what they do and they have those those big epic moments where they're um oh, it is just it's such a good series <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna enter fangirl mode and we need to do some more writing so i don't want to do that just but yes david Tennant is is fantastic um but there are also just moments with um with like Matt Smith and sort of like ah, and uh, uh, River Song. Sorry, <laughs> I love her character too. Um, oh, she's so amazing. Um, oh crap, I just forgot um, what her real name is because she is forever River Song in my brain. Um, okay, I think we've only seen a couple of episodes. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it definitely took me a couple episodes to get into. Um, because the ridiculous ne level of the first couple of episodes was just a bit much. And of course, you know, CGI and everything has come a long way since then. Um, but yeah, uh, you still need to read Ch Children of Dune. You need to break after Messiah. You might read it next month. Um, you did not get into Doctor Who for some reason, but your introduction to the world was Torchwood. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yes, there's also a couple of really fun characters there. Yes. Uh, Sarah Jane Adventures was your introduction to the world. Gotcha. Yes. Yes, yes. And she uh, she does a couple of episodes um, where she pops back in as a cameo, which is fantastic. Um, after Children is... Um, after Children is God Emperor of Dune, Chapter House Dune, and Book Six never got written. Yeah. The only thing you think is a shame about this announcement is that BBC only tweeted about it. Oh, it would have been nice to make a little teaser. Have they made a little teaser about the other ones? Um, I don't know. Um, may, maybe it's forthcoming, hopefully. David Tennant was also, yes, 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 yes. He also got to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. He did. What about Tolkien's kids? Um, um, I think there might have been. So I know that they published like sort of um, some of his unfinished notes and things. Um, I mean, his it's just it's it's not the same, you know, um, <laughs> isn't that how the movie Tolkien came about? Possibly. Yes. Agreed. David Tennant can make anything. Fin yes. She is amazing. She is amazing. Alex Kingston. Yes. Ah, River Song. Yes. She is really great in pretty much everything. Yes. She's amazing. Um, okay. Okay. We, we are very chatty. Um, so yes, we, we need Sprint. We need Sprint. I'm just going to switch gears. We can continue fangirling in the chat um, if you want, but I need to focus. So I'm going to reshare the screen and rewind it. And then we're going to get busy again. <laughs> okay, so save the document. Have a sip. Cheers. Straighten your spine, roll your shoulders back for that posture check. And four, if you need a break, take that break. Here we go. 25 minutes in five, four, three, two, one, go.
All right, that was sprint number three. How we go? How do we do? Apparently, I'm trying to put goo into the words. I don't know. Um, what am I? I'm at. I got 4:26 that time. Um, so I think I'll just a, a wee bit better than the sprint before. Um, so not too bad. Um, I'm still working on um, having the scandals explode, and um, the body has been found. So we have had one scandal the murder body has been found. Um, and so as they are congregating to, as, as part of the par party's population is congregating on the murder scene, um, there will also be a scandal happening on the other end that's going to get some attention. It's functioning is supposed to be a distraction to hopefully pull people away isn't going to quite work the way that they hope, but either way, um, yes. So two scandals and a dead body, um, in the garden, um, is being achieved. Um, next, um, we are going to, um, I'm going to have to find, get the clue, the first clue that sort of like puts them on, the path to the antagonist so i've got to figure out what that's going to be um i'm thinking it's going to be i can't um mm. so there's two things happening there's the the murderer and then there's the um matchmaker um who is forcefully matchmaking people by creating scandals um so there's there's things going on they're going to be connected but they don't know that yet. So I just, so I have to figure out how they're connected. Um, <laughs> but also, um, so yeah, so I, I'm not sure if I want the clue to be more on the like matchmaker side or more on the murderer side. Don't know yet. Maybe I should do a poll. <laughs> um, Okay, so Monique was figuring out whether or not um, the venue for the party was um, too public. Um, and so we're thinking <laughs> we were thinking about either mini golfing or trampoline park. Um, and so here was my contribution. Um, mini golf, people might not notice small projectiles, it's like small knives or, um, crossbow bolts and things like that flying through the air. Whereas if you go to the trampoline park, it might be less obvious that bodies are being tossed around. Um, <laughs> so, you know, pros and cons to either way, uh, depends on what you are equipping your vampire hunters with and the powers that you are, um, choosing to go through, go with for vampires. So either way could be very, very fun. Um, there were some options you found on the map. Nice. <laughs> Rachel is laughing at the way I think. <laughs> um, mini golf might work because you need it to be outside. Yes. Okay. That does narrow the options. Yes. They have to lead the vampires away from people and a wide mini golf area might lead over to a park or forested area. True. Um, very true. Especially if the mini golf is attached to a like paintball gun course in the woods. Um, that could be an option like owned by the same people, but like neighboring lots. I uh, just realized that vampires hanging around a mini golf place is kind of hilarious. Yes. Could be potentially funny. One of them explaining that damn little white ball from inside the tree. Like, yes. Fits the tone of your novel for sure. Good, good, good. Um, CB has counted up all of the handwritten words, 2,597 of them, which is fantastic. Um, ne ne <clears throat> Let's try that again. Nina had to go. Gotta go walk the dog and get ready for bed. Thanks so much for the stream. You're welcome. You finished chapter 19 of the middle grade fantasy. Excellent. And Emmy popped in um, and says, apart from being in a hotel because our building was on fire, oh no, and feeling unwell and run down, I would imagine, um, you're not too bad considering. Well, 
Uh, you also finished your illustrated project today. Yay. And already want to make a sequel. That's good. Um, were they able to save any of the building and your things or, um, okay. The building is fine. Just one flat chart. Okay. They are investigating and you're not let in for a few nights. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Good, good. Yes. Dead bodies. <laughs> yes. Um, Elizabeth says 330s. Six words revised. You read a section aloud to the husband, the husband, and discovered some plot holes. Also, he liked it, so that was nice. Yes. Um, Rachel says, I got halfway through the next scene. You're cutting unneeded stuff. Your dragon's ex just confronted the new bow, and it was fantastic. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Um, Monique says, I think I'm going to stop now. Thanks for the help. You're welcome. Um, Elizabeth said, I love that we can discuss scenarios <laughs> like there would be bodies tossed around in a trampoline park. Well, they would be, especially and because I'm just imagining, um, one, you have the option of, um, vampires with superhuman strength. So they're like literally tossing bodies around. And two, um, if the vampires are flying, um, you know, getting, getting a little launch from a trampoline would either help, but it would also sort of disguise them a little bit. So, fun thing. Um, Cyanide says, you rewrote a piece of the par previous paragraph and added 45 words. Nice. <laughs> good, good. Um, for the paintball place, yes. If you included the paintball place, you could have your vampire hunters shoot paint at the vampires. Ooh, garlic paint or holy water paint. Mm, yes. Um <laughs> Had dinner, then had a bath, wrote 85 words, but 85 words that you liked, which is good. CB missed your bath. Oh, no. Um, everyone look, will look like a hot mess, and you're loving the concept already. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. We've got about 35 more minutes um, before my time is normally up. So um, we're going to switch back to the flower bouquet one um and do another sprint i'm determined um i'm trying not to get distracted by <laughs> um, mini golf uh vampire paintball sessions but yes uh that sounds quite fun okay this will be fourth sprint all right so one, make sure that you save your document now that we've been working. Make sure that you have something to hydrate with. Cheers. Straighten your spine, roll those shoulders back for a posture check. And four, if you need a break, take a break. All right, here we go. 25 minutes in five, four, three, two, one, go.
Alrighty, um, I got another 436 that time. Um, so consistently in the 400s um, for, but that's okay because I'm doing the mix of um, dialogue and action and I'm trying to be very clean about it. Um, and it's working, I think. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's at least readable, which is kind of like, I mean, I have a couple of gaps here and there, but it is readable, which is great for a first draft or a zero draft or whatever this is. Um, but yeah, so still working on wrapping up the two scandals and dead body and making sure that the clue is kind of logical. Um, and then there's progress on um, the two fronts of finding the um, finding the the conspiracy matchmaker and finding the murderer. Um, so, um, not bad, not bad. Uh, I'm I'm appreciating the effort. I will appreciate the, the effort when I'm rereading this, that it is a clean draft, which is <laughs> not what I had for Project Grey. Um, and that is such a mess, such a hot mess. So I'm very glad that um, this project is cleaner, even though it's taking a lot longer to write than I had wanted. <laughs> but isn't that how everything goes? <laughs> um, so um, thank you to Elizabeth and to CB for helping me um, with those robotic entities. They always seem to, at the moment, um, know when I have stepped out to go refill my water glass. Because um, that's happened both this time and last time was when I stepped out to refill my glass and fun times. So thank you very much for reporting them and banning them and yay, I appreciate it. Um, Cyanide says, when you have an idea in your head but you can't get it down on paper, those darn words, yes indeed. And CB had, um, I thought, a really fun idea so that if you have scraps of paper or post-its, write, sort of try and write your stray thoughts down and then you can reorder them. Um, and rearrange them into a more logical manner to complete the thought. Um, so yeah. Kai did some reading and then wrote 55 words. Nice. CB got 315-ish words. Are you still handwriting? Um, Rachel says, I got thrown off my game by interruptions. Those darn interruptions. But you got three more pages revised. Nice. Persephone got 1825 total for the stream and cake. Yes, that lovely pound cake you were talking about. Um, and that is a nice total of words. Yes. Uh, 94 words. Excellent. Good. Good, good. And Elizabeth got 715 words revised. Mostly, um, mostly okay from draft one, which is nice um, when you don't have to do extra super duper revisions so that's what i'm hoping for with this um historical murder sam um thank you uh you were still handwriting hence the ish yes that's what i figured that's what i figured and guessed um uh, okay so um let me pop devon's playlist in the chat. Um, I will be back Monday, Wednesday, Friday of this week, one to three each of those times. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I still have to schedule those though. So <laughs> those are not on Devin's playlist for this week just yet, but um, we're, that's, that's for after the stream. So hopefully I'll remember to do that before like 12 o'clock tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I still need to schedule those, but I will be um, hosting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one to three 
um, and then Sundays two to five. That's my normal streaming schedule. And as of right now, I don't have anything um, that is going to alter those for next week. So that'll be nice to have the regular schedule. Um, you have 13 and a half pages to write before you will count word counts again. Gotcha. Every 15 pages. That's a good way to do it. Thanks for hosting. You're welcome. And drawing again, maybe for the sequel. If you release this project online for free, any uh, would anyone come have a read? So there are definitely places to um, put them. Um, and I know Archive of Our Own and Wattpad are um, reading sites. You might could also consider um, Discord if you have a Discord that you are wanting to get feedback from. Um, Things like that. You're welcome, Cyanide. You're welcome, Elizabeth. It was an efficient one. Oh, good. Except for our chatty times. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, oh, you hate counting words. Yeah. Well, and that's what, once you know, like, an average amount of um, your handwriting per page. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, once you have that average, you don't really have to count anymore. I mean, I know that you prefer to, to count exactly because you are doing the mill wordy thing. Um, but yeah, after it comes to a point where you're like, I don't really feel like counting these anymore. <laughs> it really does. And it comes up real fast. Um, when you're handwriting page after page. Yes. Um, okay. All right, y'all don't forget to save. Um, make sure you save. Do not lose your progress from today. And make sure that you check out Devin's playlist and um, say hi to all of your um, all of your mother all of your mothering and uh, nurturing souls. Um, we had another lovely <laughs> lovely robotic entity right there uh, trying to come in at the end. Um, so yeah. All right, y'all. Um, don't forget to save and I will see y'all tomorrow or later in the week. All right. Bye.